welcome to our service. Uh, today is, of course, the second Sunday of Easter. So we start with our Easter greeting. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, and we thank God that we can live in the reality and the gift of our risen Christ. Our service continues with our first hymn, which is Good Christians All Rejoice and Sing, which John and Stephanie will sing for us. Christians, we should always be happy to rejoice and sing, or at least to listen to the singing, if condition doesn't allow us to sing. Brothers and sisters, whenever we gather before our God, we remember that we are sinful people, but we also remember that God has promised that if we confess our sins, that he will forgive us. So let us take a brief moment to remember, uh, remember times when we have not lived up to what we expect of ourselves or we've let other people down, or let God down. And having done that, let us prepare to say sorry to God. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. We have lived for, uh, for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins 
heal and strengthen you by his spirit and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to hear our Gloria. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for special prayer for today. Almighty Father, you have given your only Son to die for our sins and to rise again for our justification. Grant us so to put away the leaven of malice and wickedness that we may always serve you in pureness of living and, and truth. Through the merits of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're going to have our Bible readings. We're going to have, first of all, a reading from Acts of the Apostles, which John Harrison will give to us, and followed by a reading from First John, which Ellie will read for us. Our first reading comes from Acts. Chapter 4, verses 32 to 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and not one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a need, needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold, they laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is from 1 John 1, verses 1 to 2, chapter 2, verse 2. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testify to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, 
as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all our sins. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anybody does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, John, and thank you, Ellie. We're now going to um, have sung to us, uh, Thou didst leave thy throne. This is to lead us into our gospel and someone who is Reverend Ajahn is going to be bringing us today. But first we hear, Thou didst leave thy throne. Gospel reading. Today's gospel reading is taken from John chapter 20, reading from verse 19 to the end. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
When he had said this, said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that they, you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be, please be seated. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As long as I can remember listening to sermons being preached on this passage, Thomas was always the main focus in a negative way. However negative as Thomas may look, there is more positivity to Thomas than what negative. The action of Thomas tells many stories. It helps us to see God's glory in action. I want you all to try and get into the mind of Thomas. But before that, let me say, I know that many of us present here may have experienced death of a close relative or friend. You felt what the grieving process is like. Emptiness, void, lost, lack of focus, brain fog, depression, horrible feelings. The best way to describe it, describe the, those feelings is like someone has taken out your heart and shred it into salami slices. That's how painful death is. Not when you die, because we won't feel anything. Thomas would have gone through the same experience. This was the same Thomas who was willing to die with Jesus. As he traveled to Bethany to see Mary four days after her brother, Lazarus, had died, that is how committed Thomas was to Jesus, that he called the other disciples and say, come, let us go, so we may die with him. So strong was his love for Jesus that he was willing to give up his life for his master. 
but now the tables have turned. Now his master gave up his life for him and for the world. Now I want you to pretend that each of you are Thomas. Get yourself into Thomas's shoe and ask yourself, how would I feel if I was Thomas? You are one of the 12. You were with Jesus every day for three years. All 12 of you ate with him, travel wherever with him, pray with him. He taught you right from wrong. You saw him heal the sick, open the eyes of the blind, deliver those with demonic spirit. You baptize followers in his name. He preached to you, he fed the hungry, and all that Jesus did that we knew nothing about. He even washed your feet the last evening he spent with you. He was arrested before your very eyes, and you could not help him. Instead, you had to run for your life to a safe place to hide. While he was prosecuted, tried, beaten, flogged, they tore into his flesh, mocked him, put a crown of thorns on his head. His clothes taken, they dressed him in one of their own purple robe. They insult him. Then he was given a heavy cross to carry all the way to Golgotha. Falling with the cross many times. In his weakness, pain, and sorrow, Helped by a stranger, they nailed him to that wooden cross, crucified him between two thieves. They killed your Lord and buried him. And Thomas was not there to help him. In fact, all but one of the 11 was there. None could help him. Remember, Thomas was the one who wanted to die with Jesus. In all that Jesus had suffered, search yourself. How would you feel? Imagine the anger, the pain, the hurt, the disappointment, the emptiness, the void, a bleeding heart, unable to heal, guilt, regret, the unanswered questions eating away at you. I should have done more. You are left with a sense of helplessness. How would you feel? Here we have an account of our Lord's first appearance to his disciples. On the day that he rose from the dead, the three women and the disciples on their way to Emmaus saw him he sent word to the others. But to confirm their faith in him, he had to come himself, that they may not have it by word or mouth only. He had to let them see for themselves, that they themselves might be eyewitnesses to his resurrection. As the 10 assembled on the Sabbath day, Jesus appeared. He found 10 frightening, scared disciples and salute them. Peace be with you. Showing them his hands and his side in the, in the midst of the affair. They jumped up rejoicing as Jesus salute them again. He wasted no time. He ordained them so that the Father sent, so that, so the Father sent me, so I send you. He breathed on them and saying, receive the Holy Spirit. But no sooner than Jesus had disappeared, 
the door opened and in came Thomas. Emotion still running high, everything still raw, fresh in his mind. He is in hiding, he cannot show his face outside. Meanwhile, the ten in their joy and elation ran to meet Thomas. We have seen the Lord. The door was locked and he appeared to us and he, he saluted us, he greeted us. He showed us his hands and his side and he breathed on us and gave us the Holy Spirit. How would you feel if you were Thomas? Would you feel that you are still one of the 11? Or would you feel like an outsider? Thomas refused to join them in their joy. Unless I see the marks in his hands and put my finger in them and my hand in his side, I will not believe. I refuse to believe. Thomas was prepared to wait and see the experience for himself. And his faith brought him to the feet of Jesus. As he appeared to all 11 after eight days from his last visit, he saluted them again, peace be with you. Turning to Thomas, he said, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out, put your hand in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas, falling on his face, said, my Lord and my God. The bleeding hands of Jesus and the weeping wounds in his side touched the very depth of his soul, remaking him, filling the emptiness in his soul, filling out every space, healing the brokenness, mending his heart, refreshing his broken spirit, renewing his conviction. All this happened for their benefit and for ours. Why ours? Because without their witnessing the wounds of the bleeding Christ, how would our faith stand? We would have become doubters. Thomas' faith and belief has many rooms, so are ours. Thomas' doubt was not negative, it was positive. It keeps faith in action, faith alive. It lifts us up and throws us down. But every time we are lifted up, we rise to new heights. And it creates more and more rooms to fill. And the important thing is, we cannot know the strength of our faith until it is tested. Doubt is not negative in this narrative. It helps us to reflect and to find our way. The bleeding hands of Jesus and weeping wounds in his side touched the depth of his soul, remaking him, filling every emptiness that Thomas was feeling. Brothers and sisters, no one goes to the doctors unless you have a need. You don't go to the dentist unless you have a need. Why do we all come to church? We come to church because we need to be refilled spiritually. Thomas had a need. That's why he refused to believe. And Jesus did not disappoint him. There is no doubt that can shut out Christ's presence from us. No door that can shut out his presence. He is the immortal, invisible God. Hidden from our eyes. The immortal love forever. Forever full forever flowing free, forever shared. Be honest with God and open your heart to him. 
Even if you have come across, if you, even if you come across as being stubborn, when you are dishonest before God, you run the risk of closing every door in the rooms of your heart for Jesus. Be like Thomas, honest, stand up for your belief. Always make room in your heart for Jesus. The more you make room is the more rooms you will discover. Invite Jesus in. He will not refuse your invitation. A closed mind will never see and receive God's blessings. Why? Because the mind already believes that it knows it. An open mind is a room which the Holy Spirit can grant us fresh wisdom. The risen Lord can enter into those space, erasing all doubts, replacing them with freshness, expanding them and enlightening them, granting you fulfillment and joy in abundance. It was from that doubting mind came those words of joy and triumph, my Lord and my God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Ajani. Thank you for those words reminding us of Thomas's experience and some of the lessons that we can learn from them. We're now going to have our intercession, which Evangelist Rhoda is going to bring to us. Brothers and sisters, good morning to all of you. Let us pay tribute to Prince Philip, the dog of Endebron. Philip, Prince Philip, dog of Endebron, died at the age of 99. The Archbishop of York, Stephen Cottrell, highlighted the Duke of Edinburgh's award as an enormous part of Prince Philip's legacy. Philip, Prince Le Philip was patron to hundreds of charitable organizations, covering a wide range of disciplines, all of which benefited from his wisdom and his inquisitive mind. Prince Philip and the af affection of generations here in the United Kingdom, across the Commonwealth and around the world, he was the longest serving consort in history. We have lost him and we cannot have him again. But, but let the almighty God receive him and put him in his bosom. Amen. Now, our intercession for today. Dear brothers and sisters, let us pray. God of grace and mercy, your son Jesus wept 
at the tomb of his friend Lazarus. Send your Holy Spirit to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and the royal family at this time of their grief, struggle, and all who fear you. Meet us in our times of questioning, anger, and doubt. Show us what we can do to enable one another to overcome isolation, distress, despair as a result of COVID-19. Make us a humbler people who know our need in your hands. Lord, in your mercy, faithful God, we praise you for the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Shed his glorious light on all Christians' people that we may live as those who believe in triumph of the cross. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, we ask you to be a real and living presence in your church throughout the world. May Emmanuel Church Forest Gate, through its preaching and works of love, continue to testify to our Lord's resurrection. Wherever we are lacking in faith and courage, Strengthen us with your spirit. Lord, in your mercy, God of all nations, we pray for peace in our troubled world. Wherever wherever nations are at war and people are suffering, we pray for true reconciliation. Protect all Christians all over the world and help them to influence their countries for the good of all and continue to pray for a fair and equitable destruction of the coronavirus vaccine. Lord, in your mercy, God God the Father, we pray for all families whose homes are disrupted by anger or bitterness and where relationships are breaking up, exacerbated by the stress of the pandemic. We thank you for the gift of your son, our savior, who walks with us on our life's journey. And as we gladden the heart of his friend when they saw him raised from the dead, may we travel alongside all who are struggling with their family life. Lord, in your mercy, Loving God, comfort the sick and suffering with your living presence. Heal all and strengthen the weak bodies. Calm confused minds and reassure the lonely with your company. We raise before you those who know with particular needs we have been asked to pray for. Lord, in your mercy, almighty God, we remember before you those who have died, especially Prince Philip, Doc of Edinburgh, in the hope that the resurrection. Unite us with them in your own 
underlying love help us to always remember that dead could not hold your son Jesus Christ and that new life for him means new life for all who believe in him. Lord, in your mercy, gracious God, your son Jesus Christ, our Lord, stands among us and we have seen the mark of your saving love. Breathe on us with the power of your Holy Spirit and send us out to share the peace of Christ with all who may cross our path in the weeks ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer, this, uh, your prayer, and save us and guide us through all the, the coronavirus and all the problems in the world. Merciful Father, accept this prayer for the sake of your son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, thank you, Evangelist Rhoda. Please stand for the peace. Brothers and sisters, as we were hearing in our gospel reading today, the risen Lord came and stood among his disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. And were they glad when they saw the Lord? The peace of the Lord be always with you. We're going to share the sign of peace. Um, we're going to share it by waving because we can't go about. So peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. I can play something. Else. service continues with the prayer to bless the bread, the Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. 
To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels, and all the powers of heaven we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus our Savior, born of Mary, to be the living bread in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread, he gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to them, saying, Take it, this is my body which is given for you, do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. We say together, Dying, you destroyed her death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you this gift of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, Form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with all your saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us. Through Christ our Lord, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, with whom, and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honor and glory and power be yours forever and ever. Amen. Have a period of silence. We say the Lord's Prayer together as our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Now, there are those who are following us uh, from home who are not able to be here physically with us, uh, if you are following us from home, please say this prayer uh, with me. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend, and brother, 
May I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. And do come forward to receive the bread.
Let us say together to give thanks for what we have received. <coughs> Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit light give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We've come to the time for notices. Uh, we have one special notice today, which uh, pertains to uh, John and Stephanie. John and Stephanie, would you come out? Uh, perhaps if you stand somewhere in front there. So as I said last week, uh, John and Stephanie um, did the um, evangelism, <laughs> tried, to, tried to social distance as well. Uh, I would be all over you if it wasn't for, for social distancing. Uh, John and Stephanie completed the evangelism course, uh, which we have here um, in the deanery, but also uh, in the diocese. And um, about three weeks ago now, the bishop commissioned them as uh, evangelists in the diocese. Uh, that would normally be an event that many of us would attend. In fact, uh, quite recently, the event actually takes place at the cathedral. And uh, we would have had the opportunity of joining you uh, at the cathedral with a whole lot of people uh, for the celebration. But obviously, because of coronavirus, it was done on Zoom. And the bishop was there. I, I was there as well. It was, was a reasonably good occasion, wasn't it? Uh, so they have now been formally commissioned as evangelists um, in this diocese. Uh, but I thought it would be good for us to pray for them as they start their ministry in our midst as evangelists. Uh, Reverend Agendi, would you want to come out? Uh, anybody else who wants to, maybe one or two, uh, we won't come too close, uh, or you can just raise your hand wherever you are uh, towards them. Well, let's pray for John and Stephanie and their ministry as evangelists here at Emmanuel Church. Our God and Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise for the ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ and the example that he sets for us and the path that he blazed for us to be ministers in your church. We give you thanks for John and Stephanie for you are calling them to be evangelists here in Emmanuel Church. But I will th thank you that our Lord Jesus Christ already shows us what an evangelism ministry looks like by the work that he has done. And we thank you for the blessings to Emmanuel Church that we have so many evangelists and we thank you for the two that you've given to us today. Father, we pray that you bless their ministry uh, in our midst, that their ministry will bear fruits, lots of fruits for your kingdom. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause. Now, uh, um, do you guys want to say something? If you just can go to the microphone and just say one or two words. Yeah. <laughs> um, we just want to say thank you so much for everyone, for all of your support and for welcoming us into this wonderful, wonderful church with all of you wonderful, wonderful people. I'm using wonderful too much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's okay, because how else do you describe something to such greatness. It's been so incredibly enriching and blessing for us to come here and to have been received with open arms and to be encouraged into this. And, and that's just been an amazing, amazing thing. And we're so grateful to be part of it. So thank you for all of your support and for all of your love shown to us. <laughs> thank you. All. Thank you. Uh, one, just one or two more uh, notices. Um, 
Our APCM, our general meeting, is going to be next uh, week, next Sunday. Uh, and we have forms out for people who want to serve on the PCC to uh, get nominated. So uh, do ask for forms. To nom I think we need like two people to nominate one person. Uh, if those of you who have been involved in this knows what, know what is required. But if you are interested, you've never been on the PCC before, uh, please ask, for a, uh, ask me or one of the others who have served and we can uh, tell you what it involves and also the way in which to sign up. We normally have to elect nine people from the congregation to serve on the PCC. So that's the APCM taking place um, next Sunday. We normally have our APCM immediately following the church service. So next Sunday, immediately after the church service, we're going to have our general meeting. We'll try not to uh, make it for very long. Normally, a general meeting lasts long because we cannot see it as another opportunity to have a fellowship. So we're not usually in a rush to get out. But because of the situation, we don't want to be in the building for any longer than necessary. So we're going to have very, very brief APCM. Just go through the, the legal things that we need to do, which is things like electing the church wardens, electing PCC members, receiving and accepting uh, the annual accounts, and so on. So that's the APCM next Sunday, immediately following the church service. Um, I think that's all that I, I want to say at the moment. After the, um, yeah, that's all I want to say. There is just one more thing that I want to say, but I think we'll leave that for a little bit later. Uh, see notice? Okay. Yes, uh, just to um, alert you that we do have uh, our collection plate uh, in front. We normally take collection round, but again, in order to minimize contact, we're keeping the plates here so that after the service, anybody who wants to put anything in can just step forward uh, and do so. I think eventually we're going to get something that's covered up slightly more than this, so that uh, to make it a bit more uh, private. And again, please do remember to, um, I'm sure you all filled in your forms as you, as you came in, so we have a record of who, who's here in case we need to contact people because of coronavirus. And as you go out, uh, please uh, remember to sanitize your hands. And again, as I said last week, uh, let's not hang around after the service. Uh, if we want to chat, let's do it outside because outside is safer than inside the building. Are there any other notices? Okay. Oh, right. Okay. Yes, that's true. Um, are there any birthdays? Okay. <laughs> Come. Oh, is, oh, right. Yes. The, oh, okay. You, she can't come. Right. Uh, it's Ifoma's birthday. Was Ifoma's birthday on the 9th? Um, I think that was, was that Friday? So, um, if I can't come out because she's doing the, uh, the technical uh, basis with the computer over there so that we can, um, we can stream the service. Uh, but we're going to sing happy birthday to Ifama. But before we do that, anybody else whose birthday it is? No? Oh, actually, we can't sing happy birthday. So, yeah, but Matthew, you can play it. <laughs> Just play happy birthday. Go on, Matthew. to sing together I'm sure so we uh, are coming to <clears throat> coming to the end of our service um, what we now have to do <clears throat> is to um, stand up for the blessing My brothers and sisters, may Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. And final hymn is a well-known one, Lord of the Dance. Please be seated. in the 
morning when the world was begun And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun And I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth At Bethlehem I had my birth Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance said he Dance for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance and they wouldn't follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John. They came with me and the dance went on. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, says he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on the Sabbath and I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They whipped and they stripped and they hung me high. They left me there on a cross to die. Dance then wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be. I danced on a Friday when the sky turned black It's hard to dance with the devil on your back They buried my body and they thought I'd gone But I am the dance and I still go on Dance, dance, wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you said he, dance, stand wherever you may be, I am the Lord of the dance, says he, and I'll lead you all, wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. Thank you, thank you, thank you for um, wonderful singing. Brothers and sisters, Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah.